Good afternoon all and, and welcome to the Vale of the Morgan Cabinet meeting taking place today on the 23rd of June 2022. Um, I'm Councillor Liz Burnett, Chair of the meeting um, as the leader of Vale of the Morgan Council and the Cabinet Member for Performance and Resources. Today marks one month, is it that long, since our appointment and in our first meeting we took reports relating to the cost of living crisis that's facing many of our residents. Today we'll include issues that affect our communities such as active and sustainable travel, education and the future vi vision for our open spaces and as an urgent item I will be bringing the Council's proposed bids for levelling up and shared prosperity funding. So before we go forward may I remind members and officers that the meeting is being live streamed recorded and will be uploaded to the Vale of the Morgan Council's website as soon as uh, practicable after the meeting. So um, if everyone's OK with that, I will move forward on to agenda item one, and that's apologies for absence. Um, I, have, I have one apology, and that is from Councillor Gwyn John, who is um, actually required a meeting of the Glamorgan Archives today as, as an outside uh, appointment on behalf of the council. So he's given his apologies today. Um, I can see that everybody else is, is here, so we're OK on that. Second is uh, agenda item two is the minutes of the meeting held on the 9th of June. And um, is I can move those as um, a true record of the meeting, if anybody would like to second. I could see your mouth moving, Bron. I'll second that, Leader. Thank you. So that's there. And um, so moving on to uh, agenda item three, which is declarations of interest. Do we have any today? No. Nope. That's great. And then on to my reports, um, agenda item four is the uh, record of the Chief Executive's emergency powers. And this is a report for noting, and as comes to us um, regularly as a, as a cabinet, it's um, in effect a record of where the Chief Executive's uh, emergency powers have been moved, uh, have been used to move forward various um, pieces of work or funding or that sort of thing. And if you look under paragraph two, it actually outlines the various um, pieces of work that the emergency powers um, have been have been used for. And, and that would include things like highway maintenance contracts, maintenance that, that we already know about in order to, to accept tenders um, and get work and, and underway. Um, and also, um, grants that we've got in to accept those etc um does anybody want to draw attention to any in this in a particular area um, mr russell would you would you like to um turn your camera off during the meeting please so on that note oh ed eddie you wanted to come in yeah, thanks, Chair. Uh, leader. It, it's 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 in, it, it is interesting. We have it on the agenda about the emergency powers, and and often people query why that they're there. Um, but we need to do it to ensure that the council is in a position to spend the monies and grants in a way that is appropriate. And sometimes them, some of those are the time constrained. Um, from my area, the land maze flooding scheme, particularly, that's a useful um, project. It's been on the go for some time, um, but it, it's good to see that the council is still move forward with it and the use of powers here has enabled that to continue. Super, yeah, thank you. And it's also one that, um, you know, quite often if if, if we've um, put out um, tenders for particular pieces of work, normally they they would be re um, referred back to Cabinet for acceptance. And, I, you know, I, I would imagine that sometimes in the future, we might have to look at, at, at that in relation to the way that, that prices are going up, because the time it takes to bring a report back to Cabinet for agreement 
the the the, the, the price might have gone up to such an extent that we'd have to retender. So I don't know. You know, these are things that are facing us in the current environment, and and whether we'll have to look at that. At the moment, it's more to 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 get work completed quickly and within timeframes. Um, but but we'll probably have to look at it. To, for the, for the future. So the recommendation on this report is that the use of the chief executive's emergency powers be noted. So um, I'm, I'm happy to move that. And I'll second that, Leader. Thank you. And I'm just going to... Can so I just say, Councillor uh, Mark Wilson wanted to come in. Oh, sorry, Mark. Um, you're muted. So I was just going to mention a few schemes that we've done on emergency powers. Um, in particular, items D, which is the tender value correction to street light and energy reduction scheme. I think that is vital because in that way, we we'll save more money for the council and be more effective in tackling climate change. So I think that's a really good initiative. The other thing is also a very exciting project, but it's you know it's been something that's been on the radar for the council for some time. That's the Clamise flood risk reduction um, management scheme, and I think that's a really good um, scheme that we're going to be doing. And I know, spoken to speaking to officers, we're really excited about that project. And also under my other portfolio of building services as well, we've got house electrical installation, installation and maintenance and repairs framework as well. So that's that's another emergency power, which is also good news. So thank you. Thank you, Mark. Super. And then moving on to agenda item five. This is a draft response um, to Welsh Government's consultation, um, statutory guidance and directions made under the Local Government Act 2000, um, the Local Government Wales Measure 2011 and the Local Government Elections Wales Act 2021. Sounds complicated for something that's actually relatively simple, um, and but bringing this to um, seek cabinet approval for the submission to the council's response to the Welsh Government consultation. Um, and the, the Local Government and Election Wales Act 2021 contains a number of provisions to promote diversity, involvement and participation in council and county borough principal councils. And, and it's quite interesting that, that the Vale is now one of only two councils in Wales where the representation um, is is gender balanced. And I, I think that that's something that is very important. And some of the things that are discussed in, in, in the um, the response, things like um, multi-location meetings, that sort of thing, have all got a part to play. So the the consultation response, I, I won't I won't won't go through this in detail because um, I'd actually like there to be um, a, a more complete consideration of it um, at scrutiny. But the in Appendix A, it actually gives our draft response um, and, it, and it's worth having a look at in terms of um, particularly question 12 um, is asking about it, whether there's any further guidance that could um, or could be used to, to strengthen the need to take into account um, equality and diversity, including the social model of disability when developing the public participation strategy and, and things like that that are really important if if um, representation is going to reflect our communities we need to make sure that's that's very important so um, I've got four comments before me uh, four recommendations before me but uh, is there anybody that would want to come in at this point Yeah, we're happy on that. Um, so the recommendations um, are firstly that Cabinet considers the contents of the report and the draft response to the consultation and they're attached to Appendix A and agrees the same submission to Welsh Government subject to referral to Scrutiny Committee and that would be corporate performance and resources in this case for the committee's consideration. That Scrutiny Committee corporate performance and resources considers the content of the, the report and Appendix A and refers any comments back to Cabinet for consideration. 
Recommendation three basically says it that should com scrutiny committee corporate performance and resources have no comments, then the, the consultation response be agreed for submission. So in effect, the response will go straight forward to Welsh Government if if scrutiny committee don't make any any uh, comments and the subject to recommendations one, two and three. Authority is granted to the Director of Corporate Resources to submit the Council's consultation response to Welsh Government by the deadline of the 22nd of July um, 2022. Um, and um, I would so move. Thank you. Um, agenda item six. Actually, this is this is a, a, a an interesting item. Is uh, for Councillor Brooks, Cabinet Member for Sustainable Places. Very apt title for this. And it's the update on Active Travel Network Map 2021 submitted to Welsh Government. So over to you, Bronwyn. Bronwyn, could I? ask you could you try and see if you can turn your volume up it might be at the bottom of your screen 100 percent i'm not sure what's happening i've tried the buttons on there can you hear me now quietly i'll put in the headphones if that makes a difference yeah stay with me everybody Right, is that any better? That's perfect, yes. Thank right, you. okay. So I don't know what's happened to my laptop, but it's, yeah, I had, I had troubles earlier with the volume, so uh, I'll have to just have a chat with IT. All right, so um, um, as the leaders uh, mentioned, this is uh, an update on the Active Travel Wales plan. Um, so as Cabinet will be aware, the Active Travel Wales Act 2013 uh, places duties on local authorities in Wales to map, plan for, improve and promote opportunities for active travel. Um, and then this work culminates in a, an active travel network map for the Council. Uh, Sustrans uh, Cymru Limited assisted Council officers with the undertaking of the uh, active travel route review, uh, which included then auditing and production of future routes with a 12 week public consultation of the active travel ne network map. Uh, and that took place between the 2nd of August and the 24th of October 2021. There, there were three amendments made to the active travel network map and, and this was following the consultation and which were agreed by Cabinet. The Council's approved active travel network map was then submitted to Welsh Government for approval in January of this year and then four additions are required by them to ensure network adherence and also then to approve the map. Um, so the, the first edition is in Roos and it links Fontagheri Road with the transport interchange via Station Road and this provides an, a, a much more direct route for cyclists and pedestrians. The second edition also in Roos and that links Fontagheri Road with Fonmon Road um, and again provides a more direct cycle route. The third edition connects Roos and Barry through Porth Kerry Park. And then finally, the fourth edition links Lamblethian to Cowbridge Town Centre. Uh, in the report, if you look at section two of the cabinet report, that provides the full details then of the Welsh of the Welsh government required changes, including then the location maps, um, which, which is actually great then to up, update those because I know the ones that we've got um, online at the moment are slightly out of date because obviously we've done a huge amount of work around active travel, um, so it's actually nice you know, to update that and actually start seeing those pieces of the jigsaw come together. So I've got two recommendations is that Cabinet endorses the addition of four areas to the previously agreed active travel network map, and this will allow it to be approved by Welsh Government. 
and secondly that delegated authority is granted to the head of neighbourhood services and transport in co consultation with myself as the cabinet member for sustainable places to agree any of the minor additions to the active travel network map over the next three years um, and I so move those two recommendations. Thank you Bronwyn, I'm, I'm very happy to uh, second that and I, I, I think it's uh, a, a really good piece of, of work and certainly fits in with our overall aim of increasing opportunities for people to, to travel actively, whether that's by walking, cycling or scooting, is, which is more frequent these days. So thank you yeah. for that. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, to trying out some of the routes. Yes, that'll... definitely. And I think if members also want to have a look at the, we've got a lovely video actually upon our website around actually telling people what active travel is. And it's not always those immediate things. It could be somebody out on their mobility scooter. It's still active travel because they're coming out of their homes and actually out into the into the fresh air and, and, and out into our community. So I think it's really important that we, we just think a little bit outside the box and those what we think are the very traditional routes of active travel. <coughs> You, you've just brought to mind my, my vision of the first time that my father got a, a mobility scooter and I had to try and catch up with him on the on the um, cliff, cliff walk in Pinar. It wasn't it wasn't easy. He was very actively travelling. Yeah. Um, so thank you. And um, I'll look forward to the developments on, on that. Um, the next report, agenda item seven, is still with Bronwyn and um, different type of travel altogether, sustainable travel this time. So over to you, Bronwyn. It is. This is. Uh, thank you, Leader. This is the uh, the Barry Docks Transport Interchange, which we've had uh, lots of sort of talk about and reports about in the past. So it's been a you know developing project, and this is the Well Tag Stage Three Business Case and Delivery Program. So the the report just provides the information on the development of the Barry Docks inter Interchange Scheme. Um, and the council has been following the Welsh government's well tag guidance, and that requires the development of a business case for transport keys, transport schemes. Sorry, get my words mixed up. Before they actually receive then full funding. So the the stage three well tag report for for this particular scheme is attached to the cabinet report, and it sets out what is known as a five case business plan, and that business plan then provides details of the first of all the strategic case which details why the scheme is required and what existing problems it will try and resolve then there's the financial case and that advises what it will cost and where the funding is actually going to come from thirdly we've got the transport case and that explains about what the impact of those changes will be uh, Fourthly, we've got the commercial case and that shows how we intend to procure the works. And then lastly, the management case and that advises what the deli delivery process will be. So the report uh, before you uh, at this meeting uh, also details the council's proposals to upgrade Barry Docks railway station and then the larger master plan, which provides for, for work both north and south of the existing station and that will provide uh, an additional park and ride capacity, a new bus interchange, a new taxi interchange, electrical vehicle uh, charging infrastructure for bus, taxis and cars, uh, the digital infrastructure and potential for de development of land on north of the station and then minor station infrastructure requirements for example cycle parking signage seating information etc and then lastly the development of a high level station master plan um, so to go back to the to the well tag uh, scheme there's a range of options have been considered through the study and then option two is preferred now all the options are similar in design and the difference with option two which provides road access to the station north of the line from Dockview Road. And this option or this preferred option was chosen because the leases on some of the land parcels north of the railway line run on for a few more years. So option two then will be the easiest in that respect to deliver. It's proposed that phase one of the scheme will just be the works south of the line because the council owns all that land. 
and then the Cardiff City Region and Local Transport grant funding proposed will cover the phase one of the works, but some funding has uh, been provisionally agreed to try and progress land acquisition north of the line. And this is, is down to the current funding programme only runs to March 2023 um, and the funders wish to reduce the risks around delivery. Um, so I've got quite a few recommendations which I, I will go through individually. So recommendation one is that the stage three well tag study setting up the full business case for the Ballydox interchange scheme be agreed. Number two, that authority be granted to the Head of Neighbourhood Services and Transport to progress the preferred option two of the well tag Stage 3 report. Three, that authority be given to the Head of Neighbourhood Services and Transport in consultation with myself as Deputy Leader and Cabinet Member for Sustainable Places and the Council's Head of Finance Section 151 Officer and that will tend to Phase 1 of preferred option two. Number four, that delegated authority be granted to the Head of Neighbourhood Services and Transport in consultation with the Head of Finance, Section 151 Officer, and myself as a Deputy Leader and Cabinet Member for Sustainable Places, to make a contract award for Phase 1 of the scheme to the most advantageous bidder subject to appropriate funding and other approvals being in place. Number five is that delegated authority be given to the monitoring officer, head of legal and democratic services to negotiate the contract terms um, and that's in order to complete contract arrangements and execute the associated contract documentation with the preferred contractor emerging from the tender process. Number six, I am getting there I promise, is that delegated authority be given to the head of finance Section 151 officer to amend the capital programme to reflect the external funding for the scheme once funding award letters have been received from the Cardiff City Region and Merthyr Council acting as the lead authority for the Metro Plus programme. And then lastly, that delegated authority be granted to the Head of Neighbourhood Services and Transport in, cons in consultation with myself as Deputy Leader and Cabinet Member for Sustainable Places the Head of Neighbourhood Services and Transport, Monitoring Officer, Stroke Head of Legal and Democratic Services and the Head of Finance and Section 151 Officer to enter into an appropriate contract with an electric uh, vehicle services provider in relation to any charging infrastructure provided within the Ballet Docks Interchange Scheme. So there's quite a few recommendations there. I hope everybody's got them, but they are laid out in the report as well. Um, and I so move uh, uh, those recommendations, Leader. Thank you, Bronwyn. Very, very happy to to, to second this. And um, I think if you read the report about all the various well tags that we've gone through, uh, there's been quite exhaustive research on this. But I think that, you know, particularly when we've got other reports today to, to discuss the, the whole point of, of being able to deliver sustainable transport options around one hub um, near um, what well, around Barry Dock Station, which is um, a key travel point for, for many communities within Barry. And looking at um, Transport for Wales proposals to, for integrated ticketing between buses and trains, it will mean that people will be able to just get one bus down to the railway station, get on a train, go wherever they need to with one ticket, no additional cost. And if we can if we can sort out the active travel as well, um, where they where they can they can cycle down to the station or something and have a safe place to, to leave bikes, etc. I think this is a, a really important proposal for the future. So thank you for bringing that. Thank and um, I, I can't. I, I'm assuming everybody's happy. I can't see any any hands up. So yes, happy to uh, to second and to agree that. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. So, agenda item eight. We have uh, the cabinet member for education, arts and Welsh language, or Rhiannon, um, looking at the cons uh, consultation on the proposed. Proposal to transfer specialist resource base at Llandop Primary to Ysgol Over to you. 
Thank you. So what I'm hoping to do today is to set in train a consultation, which will be for 26 weeks, which, as Liz has said, is about transferring the specialist resource base uh, for language um, from Sandok Primary to a scholar the Rijk in Sandtrip Major. The SRB uh, specialist resource base provides speech, language and communication needs assistance on a primary school basis. It has 20 pupils. It has already been moved from Slamdock to a scholar thrive during COVID over a year ago because Slamdock Primary was not a suitable place for the social distancing and a safe learning environment. For example, children were expected to share toilets with other year groups and because the children came from all over the Vale, it would have meant quite possibly spreading COVID all over the Vale simply by this, you know, the, the uh, ch children standing together, splashing water at each other, as we all know what they're like. Uh, it was originally intended to be temporary but actually, when they went to look at the provision at Ascol of Rijk, it is much more suitable. It is a new build school. Schlandock, which is a much older building, would require extensive, expensive remodelling in order to accommodate this, uh, accommodate the unit. And in fact, it's not central in the Vale. So Ascol of Rijk is more suitable simply because of where it is uh, to, towards the centre of the Vale. The loss of the SRB at Schlandock will mean that there's extra space. And there's an anticipated increase in the school population. So it means that Slandock will be able to accommodate more children without having to send them on to other schools in the area. And children are then going to their nearest school as far as we can accommodate them. I said there are 20 pupils. There will be very little disruption because they're already attending at uh, a scholar thrive in Slandrip Major. I did ask about transport costs, but these are going to be difficult to forecast because, of course, every couple of years children will be taken in from different areas of the Vale. So you cannot, with precision, say exactly how much that transport is going to cost, but it's not expected to vary dramatically. So what I would like to do then is I'd like the cabinets to um, recommend the consultation takes place and also that this consultation is now sent to the uh, Education, Learning and Culture Committee so that they can offer their views on this uh, on this change of venue. We're we happy to go with those two recommendations, please. Yep. Yeah, so in, in effect, thank you, Leanne. So in effect, we're authorising the Director of Learning and Skills to undertake the consultation on the proposal. Um, and, um, and, as, as, and as you mentioned, um, referring the report to learning and culture scrutiny. So on that basis, I'm, I'm very happy to, to second. Thank, thank you. you. Eddie. Are we all, are we all Eddie, Eddie? Yeah, I, I, thank you. Um, yeah, I was going to support. Um, it would be useful to have the, uh, the responses. It is a consultation and um, you, you're quite right. The fact it's been proved to be working with a better facility appears to be the right direction to go. So we'd um, be able to see how the scrutiny committee come back and the consultation and uh, hopefully it'll be for the benefit of the pupils concerned. Thank you. OK, thank you. Super. Um, and then moving on to um, Mark as Cabinet Member for Neighbourhood and Building Services and um, looking at temporary highway trading licences. Thank you very much, Leader. Um, just want to first of all um, show you, well, tell you the purpose of the report, to agree an extension to a number of temporary highway trading licences on a month to month by month basis pending the undertaking of public engagement and consultation on possible external trading arrangements and associated works for the Panath Esplanade area. Now this report is divided into many sessions. The first section is executive summary and I want to highlight a particular point here that this report considers the long term trading options and associate public realm issues relating to the Panath Esplanade area and let me catch this on the free business which are currently required to move their outside training arrangements from the highway at this location on 30th of June 2022 are not going to affect to one business in Barry Island which is simply affected by this. Now obviously you know the Vale Council spent quite a lot of money especially in the Esplanade improving the public realm and as a result lots of businesses are taking an advantage and use that as an opportunity to expand that offering to the public, especially during the COVID pandemic. And as a result, it's really transformed the Esplanade. So much so we have a lot more people visiting the Esplanade and it's become one of the key areas of the Vale Glamorgan to visit. 
And so, you know, obviously we had lots and lots of interest over the last couple of years about people visiting the Esplanade. OK, so that's the important point to consider. We also want to continue this and I want people to note the, the bullet point, the, f the fourth bullet point down on the next page on page two, that due to importance of this area and the council's wish for continued development as a high quality visitor att attraction in mean, a residential location, it's proposed that a complementary engagement and public consultation exercise be undertaken following consideration of this report to establish views from all interested parties, longer term public world, trade and associated transport arrangements. So obviously what we would like is a full and in-depth consultation exercise to be undertaken throughout the summer. So we hear the views of various stakeholders, including businesses and including residents and including visitors as well, who will, who will take part in the Esplanade and, and enjoy it for, for what it is. And also, we recommend that during this consultation period, that the existing trade arrangement, the Esplanade and Barry Island, be allowed to continue under temporary license with certain caveats on a month by month basis. So, we don't want any disturbance to these traders who are doing well on the Esplanade, who obviously, you know, providing lots and lots of good um, hospitality options for the people in Panav and for visitors. And we want that to continue. OK, so uh, what I would like to hear now is the views of cabinet members. Thank you. Thank so you, you but you've got your hand up. Uh, Ruba, Councillor Siviano. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, so really just to, to, to sort of reiterate what you've uh, said already, uh, Mark, the importance of the con consultation um, is that we, you know, we want to be collaborative in this. We want to make sure that we are um, talking to all stakeholders concerned. So the community, you know, very recently, um, the newly formed Panath Living Streets held a series of um, lectures in, in Panath, um, looking at, you know, the very concept of how we want to see Panath. Um, and, you know, and that was, you know, kind of variously attended. But, you know, we want to, we want to, uh, you know, be able to talk to all those interested groups in Panath, and there are many, as well as our, um, you know, local residents, as, as well as the businesses. So people should feel that, we, you know, we, we are really going to make this um, a collaborative, uh, forward thinking um, uh, uh, consultation. And and really just to, you know, just to remind um, uh, people that who may be watching this, um, the, but the, you know the fact is that during COVID, the council were very keen to support businesses during COVID so that they could continue uh, to function um, and continue to make a living. And as part of that, without con consultation, we did um, you know allow businesses to uh, you know have tables and chairs on, on the Esplanade um, and in Panath Town Centre, um, and that was without consultation. But that was under our emergency powers. You know, under COVID legislation, so um, it's now time for us. Now we're, you know, we're not through. You know, we're through the worst of it all now. Um, and as we are returning to normal, it, it, it you know, is incumbent upon us as a council to consult uh, with all concerned about this. So, um, you know, this is a really important piece of work. Um, and I know we've we've already had, you know. Uh, people, uh, you know, residents and businesses getting in touch with us. And what I would urge people to do is to, you know, get once the consultation is launched, uh, you know, to get involved in it. And, um, you know, and please do, you know, contact Mark or I as, you know, as, as uh, cabinet members, um, you know, if you want to make uh, particular points or if you if you need to, you know, meet us to discuss um, issues. I'm sure we're, I'm talking for you, Mark, but I'm sure we'd be happy to do that. I, I totally agree with you, um, Councillor Sivignan. I think it's it, it's important that people do engage with us, and I want to allay people's concerns as well that it will be a full consultation, that we are having a total open mind about the outcome of this. Okay, so even if we may express views before, we not be binded by those views previously. OK, because obviously many of us have been involved in election campaigns and we're not going to be binded by that. What we want to do is listen to the people of Panath, listen to visitors and listen to businesses and other stakeholders who have an interest as well. So can I move 
to the recommendations now, if that's OK. I don't have anyone else indicate who wants to speak, so I'm going to move to the following recommendations. First one, recommendation one, that cabinet notes the composition of highways trading license in place at Panarf, Esplanade and Barry Island. Recommendation two, that the cabinet endorses the intention from the Director of Environment and Housing using his delegated powers in consultation with monitoring officer, head of legal and democratic services to offer new highways trading licenses on similar terms and conditions to those issued previously the following businesses, Casa de Margaritas, Sundowners Champagne Bar, Beach Cliff Fish and Chip and Bar, Enzo Barry Island in the advance of the expire of the current license on the 30th of June 2022. Number three, that in pursuant of recommendation two, Cabinet agrees to the temporary licenses but also above being issued on a month by month basis from 1st July 2022 and providing the conclusion of consultation engagement of reference recommendation five, which is coming up. That number four, that Cabinet agrees to the Director of Environment and Housing determine the quality and design of all street furniture used in the license spaces during the temporary license period for these four businesses. Number five, that delegated authority is granted to the Director of Environment and Housing in consultation with the Chief Executive Director of Place for Leader and Cabinet Member for Sustainable Places, Neighbourhood and Building Services and Community Engagement Equalities and Regulatory Services to determine the details and to undertake public consultation, longer term public well, transport and train options for the Plath Esplanade area, which details will be follow the outline as out in paragraph 2.16 in the report. So I'll alert people to paragraph 2.6 in this report. And for benefit of the members of the public watching this, that's on page eight. OK, and number six, that a further report is presented to the Cabinet for its consideration, conclusion of public engagement and consultation outside no later than the end of April 2023. And number seven, that this report is referred to Scrutiny Committee Environment and Regeneration in order to for the views of that committee to be considered as part of the engagement and consultation exercise. And that the use, number eight, that the use of urgent decision procedure as outlined in section 15.4 of the Council Constitution is exercised in connection with recommendation two to four. I've also got a final additional recommendation, recommendation number nine, that the consultation exercise will include local members members and any other members of the council wish to participate. Of course, any member can turn up to scrutiny committee as well. OK, so I was uh, so move. I'd like to second that. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you. Um, and if, Thank if, you. I, if, if I could just um, add in, I, I would imagine that uh, the cabinet member for sustainable places will also be taking an active part in this because this is this is one of the things that we actually felt very strongly about that the Vale is made up of a lot of special places and that we should be working to enhance them, not detract from them. And we should be involving as many people in our communities as possible in those discussions that we should be looking to have comprehensive and transparent consultations. Um, and I'm, I was pleased to see that it is going to um, scrutiny committee where on top of participating in the in the overall consultation if members of the public wish to attend scrutiny and speak they would be very very welcome to to, to do so and to have their their opinions on record so I very much look forward to this coming back um, I think like most I've already got quite a substantial inbox um, from from this on both sides I have to say but I don't think it's a binary choice. I don't think it's a yes or no. I think that there are various shades of, of outcome for this and with a, with a comprehensive um, consultation we will hopefully reach a solution that is right for the town. So thank you. Thank you all for your input in this. I think it will be very good going forward. Right, so I shall move on. This is where I might become slightly disorganised or more disorganised. Um, for agenda item 10, urgent items, um, I do have an, a, a, an urgent item to put before you today. Um, and that is um, the uh, related to our bid for the levelling up fund, um, the round two of the levelling up fund and the UK shared 
Prosperity Fund. Um, this has been developed up to the wire. So there will be points in this um, item where I will likely call officers in just to double check some of the uh, content as it has changed minute by minute up until a few hours ago. So this is to report, is to update Cabinet on the Leveling Up Fund and UK Shared Prosperity Fund and to seek delegated authority to submit an application for the Leveling Up Fund round two and also um, submit an investment plan for the UK Shared Prosperity Funding allocation in line with submission deadlines. Um, this report, this is a part one report. I will be bringing a part two report later in the agenda to, to look at some of the, the more commercially and economically sensitive um, aspects of, of, of the bid. So the content of, of this cabinet report is time sensitive, which is why it's come as an urgent um, item today due to the submission deadlines for the levelling up fund and the investment plan for the shared prosperity fund. I mean, it was last reported to Cabinet on the 14th of March 2022, um, where we brought it just before the elections, because at that point we thought that the, the deadlines for submission were or could have been during the pre-election period. Um, since that time, um, UK government's published guidance for both funding streams and it's updated the index of priority places for levelling up fund and the Vale of Glamorgan local authority area is now a category one area which is which is good news whereas we pre previously we were category two and category one represents the highest level of identified need um, and it's one of the four bid assessment criteria so so that is is good news and um, since the publication of guidance for the levelling up fund bidding process, um, officers have been working relentlessly, I have to say, with um, and at pace with consultants Rothwell and with relevant landowners and partner organisations to develop the proposals that are before you today for consideration um, by the funding body. So Cabinet today is being asked to endorse the emerging levelling up fund bid and investment plan linked to the UK Shared Prosperity Funding Allocation, which is outlined in Section 2 of the report, um, subject to legislative provision, statutory consult, consent and, um, and funding. So just moving to the other. So first of all, if we look at the levelling up fund, I mean, this is a competitive fund and, and within that there, there comes its own challenges. With funding distributed to places across the UK based on successful project selection. So the, the projects that are put before you have been specifically chosen um, for their fit with the UK government criteria. But alongside that, they also fit with our overall aims um, for the regeneration of Barry. So it fits with some of the other things that are going on in, in Barry. It's open to projects that can demonstrate spend from the fund in the 2022-23 financial year. So we've got to be ready to be quick off the mark. Um, it could be um, include capital development costs and the, the funding body, i.e. UK government, would expect all funding provided from the fund to be spent by 31st of March 2025. So this is something that has, has got to move fast and be quickly delivered. There's a potential maybe to slip it a year on exceptional basis, but I don't think we can we can plan on that. The fund um, will focus on on smaller scale local projects that require up to twenty million in capital grant value per bid. And if you if you look at on page six at paragraph starting at paragraph two ten. Um, it starts to outline some of the proposals that we're putting forward. First of all, um, the Barry Mole and the Marina. And for, for those non-Barry residents, the Mole is that bit that sticks out in the middle of, of, of um, the dock. And um, somebody one, at some stage is going to tell me why it's called the Mole. But uh, anyway, Barry Mole and Marina. 
and it's a proposed list to facilitate a new marina at number one dock with the, um, with the, the mole as a centrepiece of um, coordinated redevelopment so that the marina would attract visitors and tourists to town and, and serve as a catalyst for the next stage in regeneration of the docks. Um, I think we all say there, I would imagine that townsfolk would actually quite enjoy a marina as well. The, re the redevelopment would include an upgrade of the locks onto number one dock, provision of innovative business incubator hubs, so employment space, featuring, featuring a small number of units to, to um, support a range of businesses, units for hospitality businesses, some new residential properties and a landscaped area of public open space. Um, and that's about two acres of, of the mole, which would actually be in public open space. So you can go for a wander along, you know, maybe um, visit the, the hospitality spaces, etc. The proposal would be delivered actually by the landowner, which is ABP, with the levelling up fund grant being used as, as um, gap funding. Um, and there have been in-depth, involved, long discussions with ABP and we're delighted that they are a partner to this scheme. The full scheme design proposals will be developed in due due course subject to statutory consents etc but there, there are um, sort of basic designs uh, available and the second part of the bid is Barry Water Sports Centre and the proposal is to redevelop a brownfield site which abuts the eastern end of number one dock to accommodate a new green purpose-built water sports facility designed to boost leisure opportunities and wider community use of the area and the facility would provide a new home for the o ocean water sports trust which is currently based on the mole so if you think about what we were talking earlier with the transport interchange um, by barry dock station this would be across the road from that um, and would be a leisure and community facility which would be available not only for everybody in, in Barry and people and visitors but also for the, for the local area as community space with them. Um, in terms of, of project delivery the model is that the proposal is to be delivered by the council subject to negotiating and agreeing terms with the landowner for a long lease um, and once complete it's proposed that the new facility would be sublet to the Ocean Water Sports Trust. Um, and, and in section four, it, it outlines the, the relative sort of financial and legal considerations to that. But I think the difference there is that we understand the difficulties that a lot of third sector and, and voluntary organisations face in the current climate. And by the council uh, undertaking this development, we, we can support the Ocean Water Sports Trust going forward to deliver this for the for the communities of Barry. So that in effect dovetails in with the employment land that's been developed in the waterfront with the hospitality spaces um, developed in the waterfront, the whole IQ, et cetera, the new school in the waterfront, the forthcoming Cardiff and Vale College that's, that will be developed um, on the waterfront, you know, all those developments, and they are all starting to build together to provide the types of facilities and services to support the local community in Barry, and also will will hopefully develop links between the waterfront and um, the town centres in Barry as well, so that they they become interconnected and mutually supportive communities. Um, within the town. So that's that's the proposal for the Barry Water Sports Centre uh, for the um, levelling up fund and then looking at the shared prosperity fund. And this is slightly different. This 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 is um, the UK shared prosperity fund is actually a suite of complementary um, funding, which is which they term as levelling up funding. And it's that is a mix of revenue and capital funding. And the overarching aim of the fund, as specified, is to build pride in place. And that's exactly what we've been trying to do. If you look at the Barry Place board, etc. 
increase life chances and that's opportunity as well as gaps in healthy life expectancy etc and underneath this aim there are three investment priorities and that's communities in place supporting local businesses and people in skills and skills um, we already have an indicative allocation for this fund but we will be working up the um, the bid to submit uh, the investment plan to submit alongside that and if you look at paragraph uh, 2.20 it, it explains there that a draft investment plan for the Vale of Glamorgan local authority can be found in appendix 2 and it's worth having a, a, a more in-depth look at that in terms of that is where the uh, necessary um, underpinning evidence is for the the broad proposals that we are putting forward. Time is tight. The submission deadlines of uh, are currently 6th of July 2022 and the 1st of August 2022 for the levelling up fund firstly and the investment plan linked to the UK Shared Prosperity Fund that's respectively um, and that's that's challenging um, so the teams have been working um, relentlessly to to pull this together to negotiate with partners etc in terms of consultation and engagement the time scales for the council relevant landowners and partner organizations in terms of, of feasibility design procurement etc um, are also particularly challenging so local board members will be notified and consulted at key stages during the emerging programme for both a levelling up fund um, and the investment plan linked to the, the shared prosperity fund and in respect to the emerging proposals for the levelling up fund um, bid arrangements are in hand for further public engagement work to be undertaken both in online but also in person so it, it, we will now that, that things are, are sort of freeing up be out and about consulting people in person there will be other details that I will need to go into as part of the part two report. But the recommendations. Um, there are actually 10 recommendations and they are quite complex. I wouldn't intend to read everyone in detail. Um, unless the monitoring officer says that it would be best practice but they are clearly laid out in front of you um, on pages three and going on to page four but what i would say is that uh, at recommendation 10 that we would ask for the the, the use of paragraph 15.14.2 II of the Council's constitution, that's the urgent decision procedure, be authorised in respect of the above recommendations so that they can be submitted to meet those deadlines. Um, before I move, um, if I could just ask the Director of Place and the um, Section 151 officer if they have any further comments and things that I've missed out on this report. Thank you, Leader. I think you've done an excellent job going through uh, all the items in there, which um, obviously have arrived very late in the day, and I do apologise for it arriving so late in the day. Um, but unfortunately, it was due to the negotiations around figures, um, funding options, um, right up until the last minute. Um, nothing really, you've covered everything in, in a great amount of detail. For, for information, mole is actually a French term um, from Old French, and, and it refers to a large body of rock separating two pieces of water. So that's why it's been called the mole. Nothing to do with small furry uh, rodents. Um, and um, yet you've picked through everything. It is a project of two parts, the, which is, as you've explained, relating to the, the construction of a marina and associated facilities and obviously the Ocean Water Sports Trust building. So uh, nothing I would like to add really to that. You've, you've gone through it in great detail. Thank you for that. Yeah, I just wanted to say a couple of words about the financial risk. Um, quite quite clearly, as you, you've set out in your introduction, um, Leader, this piece of work has been pulled together at, um, against 
very, very challenging timescales. Um, and certainly as officers, um, we'd want the most time possible to be able to perform all the due diligence on the on, on the proposals. Um, we've obviously worked very closely as finance with, with Marcus and team and with the um, external advisors um, to, to go through all the risks and they're set out clearly in, in the paper in front of you. Um, that due diligence work doesn't stop. We will continue doing that um, as we go through the, the next couple of gateways of the um, of the government process. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm minded towards financial risk in, in my role. At this stage, um, that's limited um, to the investigation work that's set out in 4.7. In, in the paper, and we, we estimate um, those investigation works would cost about um, £50,000 and that there's council reserves that we can look to to, to cover that. Um, obviously, the the important thing is making sure that the due diligence continues to show that the financial case um, stacks up and we're, we're doing that work in very challenging economic um, circumstances. Um, prices rising uh, at historic recent historic highs um, and continued problems and challenges with, with supply chains. Um, so there, there are plenty of risks abounding, uh, but in terms of the immediate financial risks for the um, submission of bid, there I'm comfortable with those. Oh, Marcus, your hands up. Did you want to come back in? Sorry, leader. I I neglected to mention with regard to the shared prosperity fund, which is one one other issue obviously covered by this report. Um, and, and I know you've covered that in some detail as well. Just to, re, um, to reiterate to uh, members of the cabinet that um, the bid itself, the investment plan that the council is preparing is a local investment plan, which will actually submit, be submitted to regional partners, um, Rondekin and Taff, who are leading on a regional bid. In, in Wales, um, UK government has is operating the shared prosperity fund in a slightly different way to the way it's operating in England and it is actually administering it on a regional basis rather than on a, a local authority basis so although we have been allocated funding and we have that funding um, if you like guaranteed to us subject to the investment plan um, it has to be accessed through a regional process so just advising members if that's the reason why in, in the report itself it refers to local and regional investment plans that is why. Super. Thank you both. And I've just remembered one thing that I, I think I failed to mention is that shared prosperity, that, that fund is actually veil wide. So that we, we can look at issues from a veil wide perspective, whereas the levelling up fund bid is focused upon um, Barry regeneration. So, um, so I, I look forward to that. So um, on that note, I would so move those recommendations and um, we've got a seconder. Thank you. Um, well, that's all that I've got under part one. But as mentioned earlier, I do have an item for discussion, which is the part two related report to, to the, the one that we've just discussed. Um, and these are matters that are considered to be confidential and therefore the meeting will now be required to move into private session um, where we can discuss those confidential matters under part two. Um, therefore, I will ask for Cabinet to agree to move to part two. Yeah. And yes, Margaret, move. you're moving move. part two. Yeah, Excellent. I'll support that. Yeah. Super. And therefore, my next step was to ask the Cabinet officer to stop the recording of this open session to ensure that no members of the public are present at this point and only allow relevant parties to remain to hear the detail of the items to be discussed. Um, following the meeting, though, the outcome of the part two discussions will be formally captured as part of the minutes of the meeting and will advise all parties of the final decision of the Cabinet um, for the relevant items. Um, and as we've already moved and agreed part two, um, as I said, I will ask the Cabinet officer to, to, to go forward.